I had about half a dozen listeners email me the same article from the CNN Belief blog this week. The headline read, Christians are happier than atheists on Twitter. So before I even click the link, I'm already salivating. I'm ready to skewer the shit out of this pseudoscientific nonsense. So I read the article, took a look at the research, and I read their conclusions. And unfortunately, as much as I'd love to unleash both barrels of my verbal ought six on this thing, it turns out that there's just nothing there to criticize. The research was sound. The methodology was solid. The conclusions were perfectly defensible. And it turns out that they're right. We're a bunch of miserable, hateful, unhappy fucks. I know this might come as a surprise to you, because you might often mistakenly think that you're happy, but you can't argue with science. In fact, you might as well just stop arguing altogether and dive headfirst into a tub of caramel sutra laced with Xanax, for you will never know joy. So quick, before you slit your wrists while sitting in a running car and drinking bleach, let me explain to you how the advanced new science of Twitterology works. The first step is, of course, to draw a conclusion. As you'll see later, if you don't start with a conclusion, the data's going to be way too messy to interpret later. So start off with a firm conclusion and hold on to it no matter what. Now step two, got to generate some samples. And remember, this is no time to worry about precision. To study atheists and Christians, for example, all you need to do is randomly select five prominent atheists and five prominent theists and call their followers your two groups. I know that not everybody who follows Dinesh D'Souza is a Christian and not everybody who follows Richard Dawkins is an atheist, but this is science. It doesn't have to be exact. So once you've got your suspect samples, you analyze their word usage. Whatever words are used more often are indicators of deep psychological truths about the people using them, and we know this because we just do. It doesn't matter that there's no credible research or even logical reason to believe in the core assumption behind this research. The people doing it wore lab coats or they had pocket protectors or something, and that's what makes it science. So with our rock-solid assumption that people who say happy a lot are happy, people who say family a lot love their families, and people who say food a lot are fat, we can go to work on our pseudo data, and when we do, we discover our conclusion, which, as you'll recall, we decided on before we started the research. In this instance, we've proved that atheists aren't as happy as Christians, and they don't love their families as much. Voila, conclusion reached, thesis proven, Nobel Prize is in the mail. Now, admittedly, some atheists have been a bit more critical about the research than I have been. They point out that there's no reason to assume that people who follow prominent Christians and people who follow prominent atheists are using Twitter for the same purpose. They point out that many atheists have multiple Twitter accounts and keep their atheism on one and their family shit on the other. They point out that even if the sample was perfect, the study would still be nonsense as the average Christian is older than the average atheist, more likely to have children, and more likely to come from a large family, and any one of these three covariances would render all the data worthless. They point out that even if the data was useless, the conclusion still would be, considering that what they would have proven is that a privileged majority is happier than an underprivileged minority. But I think these critics are looking at it in the wrong way. So before you toss out this study just because it's poorly constructed, obviously biased, impossible to blind, poorly constructed, unscientific, and stupid, I should point out some of the other things that this study finds. Consider the fact that atheists were shown to be far more likely to use words like reason, think, idea, and knowledge. So if we accept the flawed premise of this flawed study, it also proves that atheists are smarter than Christians. In addition, it shows that atheists are far more likely to use words like dick, fuck, and pussy, so clearly we're also getting laid more often. After all, if we accept the first conclusion, and the others are reached by the exact same process, it's impossible to ignore. Well, not impossible, because the researchers did ignore it, but it's hard to ignore nonetheless. And if you need any further proof that this is sound science, consider the alternative. If this study isn't legitimate scholarship, then CNN just ran an article that used unproven science and half-assed conclusions to reinforce a hurtful stereotype that has no basis in fact and wouldn't be newsworthy even if it did, and I think we all know that that would never happen.